together growing in faith, changing communities. Together, growing in faith, changing communities. My dear brothers and sisters, today I'd like us to reflect on the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, from verse 28 to verse 34. At that time, one of the scribes came up and asked Jesus, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he, and to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask Jesus any questions. There's something absolutely interesting in this conversation. It is the conversation between Jesus and a scribe. A scribe is someone who was a writer, someone who was educated someone who will have known the law, someone who will have studied the law, particularly the Torah. And so when this man comes to Jesus and he asks him a question, is he asking because he doesn't know? Is he asking because he's trapping Jesus? Is he asking because he wants to confirm what he already knows? All three of these are possible. He could be asking because he absolutely has no idea. He could be asking to test Jesus. But he could be asking also to confirm what he already knows to be the truth. Is he asking because he's searching for knowledge? Is he asking because in Jesus he finds someone who teaches with authority? It is all possible. I love the, the, the concept that he goes to Jesus and he asks. Because when one asks, one opens oneself to all sorts of answers. And to a large degree, you make yourself vulnerable because you do not know the answer you will get. While you make yourself vulnerable, you also are empowering yourself. Because the answer that you get, hopefully, will lead you into deeper thoughts and meditation. I love the response of Jesus. Hear, O Israel. Shema Israel. It's a beautiful phrase, beautiful verb to hear, to listen. And I think the first thing, while it can be used as a figure of speech, while it can be used from the linguistic point of view as part of introducing a speech, listen, then the most important part is, but it can also be used as a phrase in itself that is full. It's full of meaning. Listen, hear, listen, O Israel, and how many of us need that. To listen to God. I need to, to listen to God. But I can also 
listen to to myself listen to my fears listen to the anxiety listen to my concerns listen to the turmoil in my mind in my heart listen to the conflict listen to the disturbances sometimes we need to take time out and to listen and to really really listen to what is going on in our lives to give myself time and ask myself an important question what is it that is going on why am i sad why am i fearful why am i skeptical why do I struggle with trusting people? Why do I struggle with trust issues? Why am I afraid to love? Why am I afraid to let go? And I think we are called to do that, to listen. To listen to our bodies, to listen to our thoughts, to listen to our surroundings and to listen to the words that are intended yet they are not verbalized to listen to the unspoken words to listen to the non-verbal communication there's so much in there the second thing listen O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. To acknowledge that one of the greatest commandments is to listen to God. But the second common is to love God. To love God with my mind, with my soul, with my being with my strength, with my everything. What does it mean to love God? What does it mean for you to love God? Because what it means for me may not be the same for you, may not be the same for someone else. If I love God, I want to do what he wants me to do. If I love God, I want to offer my life in service to God. That's how I show my love for God. You may show your love for God by loving those he has given you. You may show your love for God by doing certain things that you feel deep down in your heart you are being called to do as a single person, as a student, as a child, as a teen, as a youth, as a mother, as a father. You see God in those around you. You see God calling you. In the poorest of the poor you see God calling you in earth mother nature that cries out for salvation you may be seeing God calling you among those who are outside you may see God calling you among those who are outcast you may see God calling you among those which society has rejected and when you do that you are loving God it is not what I do, it's what God does in and through me. And so everything that I should be doing is to praise God. And as I do it to the least of my brothers and sisters, I'm doing it to God. That's what it means for me to love God. But the response of this young man is amazing. He seems to understand what Jesus is saying. But listen to what he says, and it's quite interesting. Teacher, you are right. You have truly said he is one, that there is no other but him, to love him with all our heart, with all our understanding, with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. He put it in his own language. And the language of love is like that. That you use your own language 
in order to love God. You don't have to love God the same way as I love God, the same way as your mother loves God, the same way as your parents love God. Be your own self. And Tertullian says this, the glory of God is found in a human person fully alive and fully divine. God created you not to be a copycat of someone else. He created you to be your own self and allow me to grow in who I'm called to be and allow you to grow into whatever God wants you to be. May the Virgin Mother of God continue to be with us, to protect, to bless, and to guide us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.